and we're back again to share with you uh, a lesson that I hope you'll find interesting. We've been kind of giggling about it here because it's called The Monster Eats Its Children. And let's take a look at it. Okay. Where do we start with something like this? Well, we start in ancient Greece. And there was a god who existed in ancient Greece who devoured his own children. And his name was Kronos, C-H-R-N-O-S, Kronos. I heard a couple of O's, okay? That's, that root of that word is a lot of, it's chronological, chronomatic, chronicle. I mean, everything that has to do with time. That's what it means, time. That's the Greek name of the god who ate his children. In Rome, this god was known as Saturn. You know him as? The whole thing. He played out his part astrologically as the son of a marriage between Uranus the god of the New Age, and Gaia, the earth. When the divine principle intercoursed with the earth, birth was given, and one that was born was called Kronos, or Saturn. And Kronos, uh, or Saturn, had children of his own. He had six children. And this is very important, that number six is very important. He sat by his wife, and his wife's name was Rhea. And as his wife gave birth, he would eat the children. He devoured the children. And interestingly, he devoured the first five. That was important. The sixth child escaped. The name of the sixth child was Zeus. And Zeus escaped because Rhea provided a stone wrapped in a blanket. And Saturn devoured this stone. Okay. Now, what do we see here? What you see is the fact that time, Saturn, Satan, devours the five senses. Your five senses, sight, taste, touch, smell, hearing. Once you are under control of the lower mind, then Kronos or Saturn or Satan has swallowed your inner child and devoured it. See. The sixth sense is that which lies out of the realm of the carnal mind and that escapes and becomes part of the God consciousness, Zeus. Son of God, okay? All of this bizarre stuff I'm telling you is the foundation of your Bible. That's where it all comes from. Go with me, if you would, in your Bible to page 588 in the Old Testament. I'll show you something interesting. It's the book of Isaiah. I hope it's not too dark in there. If it is, we can put the other light. But we try to keep the, the heat down a little bit because I don't know about the rest of you, but I get hot. Okay, Isaiah... And let's go to Isaiah chapter 14, and I'll show you when Saturn, Satan, Kronos devoured the uh, five children. Isaiah chapter 14, and go with me to verse 12. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. Now, Lucifer means bright star. Okay. How you are cut down to the ground. Now, this is why it happened. Look at verse 13. For you have said, I will ascend. That's one. I will exalt my throne. That's two. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the north. That's three. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. That's four. I will be like the most high. That's five. That's the five senses. That's the devouring of the five children by that which was the bright star who then gives himself no longer to be the bright star Lucifer, but now becomes Satan or Saturn or Cronus. He has devoured his children. He has devoured and controlled the five senses, and he is no longer in one partnership with God. There's another interesting thing that you'll see there. Go with me, if you would, to page 251 
in your little Bibles, and the rest of you go to 1 Samuel, okay? 251 in your little Bibles, and go to 1 Samuel, and 1 Samuel chapter 17, and uh, we'll look at 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 40. Here's David. Do you remember when David set about to slay Goliath? Something very interesting. David in verse 40 says he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brick brook and put them in his bag and then he used that one stone. Those five stones represent those five senses right here. He's, in other words, David is taking control of those five senses. When you take control of the five senses, when you take those five stones under your control, one of those, which will be the stone the builder rejected, will slay the beast, which is that in your forehead, that in your consciousness. So you see the five eye wills of Lucifer, which became Satan, the five devourings of the children of Saturn, the five stones that David took, so then you have the story fulfilled by Jesus Christ. What happened to him? He took five wounds, hands, feet, side. Ow! And the matter was settled. Okay. He restored. And what happened then? Those five senses, those five which had been destroyed by the lower mind, when Jesus took the five wounds, that symbolically put to death then the five senses and set you free. Okay. And then you can rise above the five senses because they have been controlled here by Saturn or Kronos. Now, interestingly, the sixth child, Zeus, escaped because he was hidden in a blanket. There is the important thing. Your lower mind does not know of that sixth, that pineal gland, and that's the stone the builders rejected, and it may swallow, never knowing what it has swallowed, never knowing what it is, mistakenly think that it has devoured, but no, it has simply allowed you to escape. It has allowed the Zeus in you or the God part in you to escape. Okay? Kronos, or Saturn, ate his children because he was afraid of losing his power to one of them. He had heard that one of these children was going to grow up and overthrow him. This is the basis of the story of Devaki. Devaki and Vasuvida, okay, are going to have a baby. Only Devaki and Vasuvida have never had sexual intercourse. And Devaki finds herself pregnant. And so the angel comes to Devaki and says, Fear not, Devaki, for that which is within your womb is the personality of God, you will give birth to Hare Krishna, Christ the Son. And when Devaki gave birth of a, of, a, of a virgin to little Hare Krishna, the wicked king, Kansa, heard that this child was going to rise up and throw him out of his kingdom, so he set out to kill all the children two years and younger. Now that story, in turn, gave basis to another story of a young lady by the name of Mary. And Mary was hanging out with Joseph, but Mary and Joseph had never had sexual intercourse, yet Mary was pregnant, and the angel came and said to Mary, Fear not, Mary, for that which is within you is the Son of God, and his name will be called Jesus. And then, when little Jesus was born, the wicked king Herod, had heard that this little child would grow up to overthrow his kingdom, so he set out to kill all the children two years and younger. And basically, it all comes out of here. And, and, and we'll cover that, see, as we go along, and I'll show you. King Herod slew all the young children. This is Saturn, this is, this is, this is, this is a, a Kronos, and Kansa and Herod all represent the status quo. That which will destroy that part of you that is two years old is the status quo, that which is the system. And two years old means that your mind has now come in contact with the divine spirit. Two, you and spirit are now coming together, and so the status quo, the system, the religion, will set about to kill that child in you out so that you will not then overthrow that which is the kingdom of the system in our age called religion. All right? What is that out there? Would you check and see what that is? Make it, oh, okay, refrigerator. 
You see, what's, what's interesting here is that the traditional religious concept is very leery about any of this stuff because, quite simply, if this child which has escaped them, they don't control that child in you, that's why you're here. If this child escapes and sets about to find God within yourself, then it can become a movement. And what will happen to the traditional religion which says, come in here, give me your money, and pray, and then when you die, everything good will happen. It's over for them, see? So it's really a threat. King Kansa, King Herod, uh, all of this, Saturn, it's all part of the system. And it doesn't make any difference whether it's the political system, the church system, whatever system it is that has controlled you, the thing that it does not want you to do is find within yourself that child who will set you free. It has to control you. And that's what you've seen recently in this new age in, in Russia and all over the world. People are suddenly finding, I am not going to be controlled any longer by that which is the system. Okay. Every time a traditional person frightens someone away from the inner pathway, Saturn or Kronos has devoured its child. When you are frightened out of here, when you are frightened from entering within yourself, Saturn, Satan, has eaten its child. Herod kills a child. You read about it at Christmas time all the time. We see them come in here. Oh, and then they can't wait. As soon as they get out of here, they found this make sense. They get out to this religious group out there, and they scare the pants off of them because they sell this thing with fear. They frighten people, and the frightened person then will not return here, and Herod has killed another child. Kansa has killed another child. Satan, Saturn, Kronos has killed another child, swallowed another child, devoured another child because they cannot bear the fact of you being set free from their fear. Because the only way they can keep you coming is to sell you on fear. If you don't show up, you're going to hell. So you gotta show up. What would you do? You don't wanna go to hell, so you show up. You don't even question, is there a hell? I don't know, but they said there is, so I'll show up. And if you show up, you'll bring a buck. Huh? If enough people are scared that they're going to hell, they show up, they give a buck, everything goes on. Forever, it goes on. And you all die. You found out it's a bunch of fakakta. Where is this that was supposed to happen? Nothing happened. I gave all the money. Who are you going to tell? How are you going to come back? You don't even remember. You come back, you don't even remember. And unless somebody's there to punch you on, you come right back in again. Some guy says, it, it, don't be nice, you're going to hell. You didn't go to hell last time, but you don't remember that. So, Kronos or Saturn, eventually, what happens? This is the good part. They get sick. He got sick, and he puked, and he threw up the five kids. <laughs> is this great? <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? When you found that stone, when you were set free, the system puked and they threw up that control that they had over you, and you were now free. You were no longer contained within the body of the monster. A monster had thrown up, and out you came. And when that happened, according to the myth, there was a 10-year war in heaven, and Saturn was thrown out. Let me show you something. That's the basis of these scriptures. Page 68 in the New Testament, Book of Luke. Pretty good stuff. Pretty good stuff. And you know, you, go to, you, you, you can go to the, uh, the library, look it up. I'm not, I'm not telling you stuff. You can look it up. Look it up. Look up Zeus. Look up Kronos. Look it up. You'll find all about the monster who ate his child. But I want you, when you look it up, to understand it is the basis for the stories that you've read in your Bible all of your life. Okay? Let's look, at Luke, let's look at Luke 10. Luke chapter 10. Look at verse 18. What did Jesus say? I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. I beheld it. What does that mean? That means that that false aspect of light that has led you all of your life is cast down. And you're no longer following that bad light. You're following the divine light. Cast down. Take a look at this one. Book of Revelation, page 233. 
Revelation chapter 12. Now, what did I say? I said that Saturn was cast out of heaven after this 10-year war. And Uranus was then returned back to his rightful place. Do you know something? You're sitting here like this is some bunch of fairy tale. Do you know, and I can prove something that no religion can prove, do you know that this Uranus is chugging back right now at about 500,000 miles an hour to come and scoop you up? And do you know that it's going to be here in the year 2010 and it's going to remarry Gaia in the constellation Aquarius? And do you know you can go to a planetarium and look that up? And I told people, for God's sakes, go to the planetarium before you have to go to the sanitarium. Find out that it's true what I'm telling you. Absolutely provable. Go get an astronomical book. Go get an astrological book. Go to the planetarium. Call up the professor at Ocean County College. Is there such a thing as Uranus? Is it coming back to Aquarius? Yes, the year 2010. They call it, as they sang that song, this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. <laughs> Boy, and let the sun shine, and all those bugs that have been scaring you are going to scatter when that sun shines. Are they going to scatter? They're scattering now. Revelation 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Oh, ho. And Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceives the whole world. That came, that was lifted from the myth astrological mythology of Saturn in heaven being cast out by Venus. That's where that came from. Do you know, can you imagine if you tell these people, tell them where that story in Revelation came from? Came from astrology. Astrological fact. Written in Babylon or Chaldea 7,000 years before there was any book of Revelation ever dreamed of. You see, our society does not worship God or Christ. We worship Kronos, time. Everything is time. You know, you know you, sir. You, you're thinking about right now what's going to happen next week. You don't care what's happening today. It's a beautiful day. Here I am alive, fairly in good shape, looking pretty sweet. You don't look so bad yourself. Well, why not enjoy that? No, because we've got to worry about tomorrow. What's going to happen? And then you'll get here next week, and you'll find out nothing happened. So you'll worry about next Monday. What's going to happen? And what happened last month? And what's going to That's all. It's all time. And what happened? How do you stop this mad clock? You put the pendulum in the center. Put the pendulum in the center. OK? That's meditation. That's meditation. But we worship the time. We're so concerned about the time. Even the church, what do they do? Go turn on Christian television. All they talk about, he's coming soon. This has been going on for 2,000 years. Soon. <laughs> Just wait a little longer. But if you wait a little longer, you might get old. And you might go die. And they'll have a new bunch, just like you. And they'll say, he's coming soon. <laughs> and all of them will die. And it'll go on and on and on because he told you the kingdom does not come with observation. The kingdom is within you. And just as John the Baptist was a reincarnation of Elijah and they didn't see him, you are a reincarnation of Jesus Christ and they don't see that. I didn't say, I said you are a reincarnation of Jesus Christ. Exactly what he said. So what is it then that kills us? What's it that kills your children? What do you do with a little kid? You're going to grow up. You gotta go to school. You gotta go to kindergarten because you gotta learn. Because you gotta graduate in eight years, and then you gotta go to high school, and you gotta graduate in high school so you can go to college. Because you wanna be old, and you wanna be crankety, and you wanna be crotchety, and you wanna be able to afford a psychiatrist just like your father has. And all of this thing is based on laying out the program of what you're gonna be, what your children are gonna be. Never saying, "Let me alone." I, I wanna be this. No, you can't be that because we want you to have what we never had. What is it that they never had? Peace. 
They never had that. Fought all their lives. I, we we can tell you about people, beautiful people. People think, you know what? People that get these cancers and, and, and see, you mean, that most of them have lived their life fighting, not, not with people to hurt people, but trying to accomplish, trying to achieve, trying to give their kids some kind of a life, storing up the money, going from here to there, living under this constant stress, and your body then gets to be like a, a car with running with your foot on the brake. It can only take so much and bang. And then sometimes, because you've never been told about that healing agent inside, which is that higher mind, it gets so out of control that nothing can turn it around. Sometimes that happens. You know, we can get a little closer to understanding this, I think, hopefully, with this. If we, we take a little closer look at the cast of characters, OK? OK, we got Kronos, who we know is time, OK? You know his wife's name? Rhea. You know what that means? Space. Time and space. The physical, the material. OK? Time and space, the physical and the material. Now, here's their five children that he ate. Hestia. Hestia was eaten. And Hestia means that which is the negative earth. It's the physical. It's the body. It's the earth, it's the physical, it's the things that you have to deal with all the time, you know, the physical aspects of life. Where do you see the, the second child's name? Hades. Yeah. Remember? You know what it means? Desire. The mind. You call it hell. It's hot as Hades. Where'd it come from? Did you ever, anybody ever tell you Hades was the second child of Saturn and Cronus? In other words, it is an offspring of time and space. It is an offspring of that which is the physical, the desire of the mind. The third child was called Demeter, D-E-M-E-T-E-R. And Demeter means that which is the lower mind, but it can produce spirit, OK? It's the lower mind, which can be open to spirit. The next child was called Hera. H-E-R-A, which means the higher mind. It means that which is the divine aspect of spirit within you. That child was consumed. That is wisdom. You see, wisdom is feminine. Lower wisdom, higher wisdom, it's always feminine. Just go with me real quick to page 540, I think it's 542 in your Bible. And it's Proverbs 3, 13. I just want you to see something before I just run ahead of myself with that. Proverbs chapter 3, all right? And uh, verse 13. OK. See what it says there? Happy is the man that finds wisdom. Do you see that? Now go down to verse 15. She is more precious than rubies. Here she is, Hera. OK. She. It's always the feminine principle. God is not a man, OK? That which we know God is the masculine and feminine aspect of the creative principle of the universe. And there's always that which is spirit and that which is mind, and that which is hera, which is that heart. Now, the next child is one you'll remember. You'll, you'll notice from a movie. This was the uh, fifth child of, and the name is Poseidon, water, truth. No, oh, there's a movie called The Poseidon Adventure. Do you remember that? There's another name for Poseidon. Who can think of it? Neptune. Neptune. Exactly right. Neptune. That's right. And the child who escaped from all of this insanity, Zeus. The sixth sense, that which lies above the realm of the five senses. And, and Kronos was not able to devour. Now, <clears throat> They're a threat. All of these things are a threat to the system because the physical, which is subjected okay, to the system, can one day revolt. Take a look in Russia. Oh, the desire mind, which is actually the hellish mind, can all of a sudden no longer desire to get for myself, but now can start desiring to make your life happy. That's a threat to the system. The lower mind can be 
drawn up into the higher mind. Of course, the higher mind is obviously a threat. And the Poseidon, that's a big threat because people get baptized in that. That's the second level of consciousness. The earth is the first, water is the second. That's truth. And when you get baptized in that second level of consciousness in Greek, you go on to the third, which is air. You then rise to meet Jesus in the air. And there where there are no thoughts, that's where you're lifted off into what Buddha calls nirvana. So these are a threat to who? Kronos, the system, the status quo, time, okay? But then he threw up. All of the human aspects that had been controlled by this monster, which is called the system and its religions, is free. And a war rages. You see, what's being told here from this ancient time? The ruling force, which is your carnal mind, is afraid of the child within you. There is a child within you that is screaming to thumb its nose at the system. And that little child does not hear what the system says, does not care what the system says. It only wants to be guided by its father. When you were a little physical child, you didn't know where your father was taking you, but as long as you were holding his hand, that was good enough. Did you hear what I just said? As long as he had you by the hand. You didn't know where you were going, but you trusted that you were going someplace nice because he was taking you. I remember, I've told this story before, when I was a little kid one time, I ran away from home. I ran to the cellar and hid in a coal bin. I fixed them. <laughs> That's with me. And I hid out and I heard them talking up through the rafters and they were not talking about me. And then I didn't hear talking. And it was dark then. I realized it was dark. I started to get scared. And I heard coming down the stairs. I was hanging on to the coal bin. <laughs> you know, a little kid. And I heard, you know, the doors in these cellars. And then I heard a voice. Billy? Whew. It was my father. I was fine. Just hearing his voice, just feeling his touch. And he took me by the hand, and I'll never forget what he said. What the hell are you doing down here? That's exactly what he said. Why do I want to go see Gobbler's Travel tomorrow? That's what he said. It was great. So the child with it. So what did we do with the child? We bribed the children with toys, you see. They, we bribe them with toys, don't they? Oh, come, we're going to have a great meeting. Oh, we're going to do this, and we're going to have that, we're going to have songs, we're going to have all of these things. Bribe the children to come in. Oh, you're going to see miracles. Oh, would you ever see one? No, would you come in? Oh, you'll see one next week. Didn't work out tonight. See one next week. And you never question, you know. But you come in. You keep, you know, it's like a little kid with candy. Keep bringing them in. Yeah? Keep telling them stuff. Just to get them in, get them in. You bribe them with children then they eat away at the soul of the child within, and Cronus then becomes our God. But there's a different God, and this is the one that I love to teach about. You see, this God ate the child. This God that we follow, Christ, says to the child, you eat me. You devour me. And when you do, just like the food that you take into your stomach, when you take this divine principle into you, it becomes you. When you eat food, that food is digested in your system, and that food becomes your body. You're looking at chocolate chip cookies, <laughs> butter brickle ice cream. Not to mention, if I look a little stringy lately, I've been eating a lot of lo mein. My eyes start to get a little slanty, so I wear dark glasses. Okay? But what did I just say? This God eats its children, but the Christ says, you eat me, you devour me. Come on with me for a minute. You'll get a better understanding of this. Go to page 95 in the New Testament. Go to the book of John. Page 95 in the New Testament. Go to the book of John, go to chapter 6, John chapter 6, and verse 
55. What does Jesus say? He, for my flesh is meat indeed, my blood is drink indeed. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells in me and I in him. And what do the people say? Look at verse 60. Many therefore of his disciples when they heard this said, this is a hard saying, who can hear it? In other words, you know what they're saying? This guy's nuts. What am I supposed to do? Go up there and take a chunk out of his arm? Uh, here's a finger for you, and how about a nut? What is this guy? I told you, Leroy, this guy's a cannibal. I told you that this is a cult. You think that's not what happened? That's exactly what happened. But he was talking in mysticism. He says, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood. That is an Eastern way of saying, you must do what I tell you to do. That's eating my flesh. And when you do, you will drink my blood. You will consume the same spirit that I have. You will find the same spirit that I have. But you can only do that if you eat my flesh, which means you can only do that if you do what I tell you to do. Then you'll consume the blood. Then you'll consume the spirit because you'll, you'll drink of the same spirit that I have. And Jesus tried to show us. But he said, you can't, you cannot teach people that, that, that have made up their mind. You can't teach religious people this stuff. No way. As the guru said, when you've reached a conclusion, your journey is concluded. It's all over. Forget about it. You're not going to hear anything. Why did Jesus? Jesus never told his disciples you had to be born again. Never. Never. He told religious people, you must be born again. And again, until you get it straight. Here's this guy coming down with his religious robes on. He's got Bibles under his arm big enough to choke a mule. He's got all of these religious traditions. He knows the Bible. He knows religion. He can sing Amazing Grace in 13 different tongues. And he comes up to Jesus and he says, what must I do? Jesus takes one look at this forcocked religious guy and says, no way, pal. You're going to have to be born again and get a clean slate and come back with all that crap taken off of it and taken out of your head. But he never said to his disciples, you must be born again because they were being recreated in the earth. And their rebirth would not be to come and find out how it's done. Their rebirth would be to come and lead people into the nirvana, into the kingdom of God that would be the recreation of this magnificent planet earth, into the planet heaven. Find for me where Jesus ever told a disciple, you gotta be born again. You won't, he told religious people. Simply because they are so stubborn and they think they got it down so pat. Oh, I'm saved, you know, the whole thing is I'm saved. To hell with you, but I'm saved. That's all that matters. So the kids are starving. Well, I can't do anything about that, but I'm saved. Vicious. So Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty-five, 25, you have hid these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them unto babies. Why? Because the only thing inside of you that can hear this is that part that's sucking its thumb, mm, saying, I don't know anything. When you come into meditation and you go, Oh, it's like a little baby going, oh, nothing. Then you can hear it. You come as a child, you can hear it, unless you become as a little child. And he's not talking about you got to go back and be two years old. He is saying, unless you set free the child within. Allow the child within to be born, and you'll know. And you'll be set free. And you'll live. The child who cries when an animal is hurt. The child who's free to talk to the divine instinct. Have you ever seen them child walking in the yard saying, Oh, yeah, I don't know. Hold on, wait a minute. What are you doing out there? You don't know. You'll never know. But he's really talking to somebody very beautiful that you'll never know. The child who spins and spins. I can't do it. And what do you say to the child? Stop that, you'll get busy. No. The child is continuing his pathway from God. He's much closer to God and to heaven than you are. And he knows that you spin in the cyclic motion of the zodiac in the universe. And he's just doing what God showed him how to do. It's a meditation. In fact, in Greece and Turkey, they call it the dance of the whirling dervish. It's a meditation. They spin with the zodiac. They spin with the earth. They spin with the rotation, the cyclic rotation of time and God. And we stop them because we don't know. Chrono stops them. Status quo stops them. Devour that which is the child. Don't let the child spin because, after all, the child will go into a euphoric nirvana and find God. So we can't have that. And the little child comes and says, you know what? I was talking to an angel and the angel. Will you stop making up stories? 
Well, I was talking to the angel. If you do this again, you're going to... And the angel stands in the corner and says, I give up. <laughs> what are you going to do? But he was. We are just so conditioned and are so brainwashed by these religious that we have totally lost contact with the divine. The child says he was speaking with an angel, he was speaking with an angel, and you should get on your knees and say, thank you, creative God. And let him speak and let him spin. I love the guru that says the mother takes the kid down to the beach, gets ice cream. First thing you say, don't go too near the water. You'll get wet. Get your little sunsuit on. Don't sit in the sand. You get sand all over you. Watch the ice cream. You're going to spill it all over you. you got a kid's a nervous wreck. The water's to get wet and the sand's to get all over you and the ice cream's to smear all over your face. Live. Set them free. Because we have so many cornball rules, we can't bear to watch this little beautiful thing be free. Got to raise it up to our standards. Look at our standards. Jeez. Want to get it, make sure it gets a good education so it can grow up and be like us. Can you imagine that? <laughs> no, the child has been eaten. You know, it, it, back in, in the time, I'll just, I'll just wind this down and wind this up with this. Uh, it, it, there was a story in the Old Testament of Joseph. There was a, a Broadway show made out of it called Joseph and the... Uh, technicolor dream coat, electric technicolor dream coat. Joseph had a coat of many colors, and what happened was all of his brothers, uh, his 11 brothers, uh, sold him into slavery. Some of them did. And anyhow, when they sold him into slavery, he wound up being a big shot, and he was in charge of all of um, Egypt, say. And he represents the Christ. He became a leader in Egypt, and the brothers represent our nature seeking then to repent and to be free. In other words, that part of you which comes to find, as you do here, this freedom to be set free, comes and all of a sudden you have to come to this Joseph part within you. You have to come back to that part which has risen itself. So we bring our adult nature, and that's religion and tradition to God, seeking to be free. And Joseph made a condition that they would have to bring something with them. Now, this is the 12 children of Israel I'm talking about. These are the 12 signs of the zodiac. And what did Joseph say? In order for you to be free, go to page 37 in your Old Testament. Genesis 42. And I'll show you what they had to bring. Okay, Genesis 42. Whew. Genesis 42 and verse 20. Okay, what did Joseph say? Bring your youngest brother unto me, so your words be verified, and you shall not die. In other words, bring the child within to me. Hmm. And so that's what they did. They brought Benjamin, the child. And go now, if you would, to uh, Genesis 43. And I'll show you something interesting. I don't have time to... I've, I've covered this once before a long time ago, and I don't really have time to do it now, but I'll just show you a couple interesting things. They brought Benjamin, and look at Genesis 43, verse... 34. Where did we all start this? Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait come, here, come here with me for a minute. Where did we all start? Remember when we started this? What happened? Kronos devoured the five children, the five I wills of Satan, the five stones, the five wounds. Huh? Remember that? Okay, watch this. Genesis 43, go to verse 34. And they sat before him the firstborn, that's the child, according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his use. Okay? And verse 34. And he took and sent messes. Now that's food unto them, but Benjamin's mess was... Five times as much as any of the others. Do you see that? Huh? Which means when you bring the child, then those five senses which had been controlled by the system are set free. Okay? And you are then totally controlled by that which is the divine. Now, Joseph took and he had this silver cup. Now, the word silver means a higher consciousness. And from the cup, you drink the divine nectar, which is God. And this is interesting. Look at, look at Genesis 44. Write your next chapter. Go to verse 12. And he searched and began at the eldest and left at the youngest. And look what happened. And the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. He gave the child the silver cup. You know, in that story, 
Judah, who was one of the twelve, he, Judah represents the spirit part in you. And Judah said to Joseph, I will bring Benjamin. I will bring Benjamin. And Joseph said, okay. And when Benjamin came, and J Judah said, I will stay with Benjamin. And, and Joseph said, no, I don't need you anymore. I want the child. See, all this thing about your spirit, your spirit is simply a vehicle to bring the child. Your spirit is not what's important. Your spirit conveys the child. It's the child within you who is important. That part in you that knows nothing about that which is of the lower. So it was given to the child. And, and then look what it says in Genesis 45, verse 14. It says, and he fell, meaning Joseph, upon his brother Benjamin's neck. The neck is a symbol. Look within your neck is a symbol of a bridge between the physical and the divine or the mental. And it says, and he fell upon uh, Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept upon his neck. And there's the story. The monster eats the children. The system devours the child within and devours it so thoroughly you don't even know it exists. But if you will bring the child upstairs to Joseph, up to Christ, you will be given five times more than you've ever had. In other words, those five senses which have been so afflicted by the system will be set free and lifted up to tremendous proportions that you'll know of life and you'll be part of life and you will receive the silver cup which means you will receive in your higher consciousness that which is filled with the nectar of God that which is filled with spirit and divine wisdom and truth in this new age I would pray that you would shut the door on the monster who bangs on your door of consciousness and allow yourself then to be privy to this cup, the silver cup, and the beauty which God will convey upon you. Set the child free. Bring the child to Christ. Through your meditation, bring the child to the upper room. In this age of Aquarius, as I said this morning, Jesus has said, when you see the man with the pitcher of water, enter into the house yourself. Go to the upper room, your higher consciousness, and he promised, I will meet you there. You take him up on it. Thank you for sharing this time with us. The monster eats its children. It turned out to be a pretty interesting thing. Uh, as I said to you who are here, next week we'll talk about the master